Let's check out Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon had Louis Louis J. Go- what's, his, what's his fucking name again? Louis J. Gomez, right? Is it Louis J? Yeah, Louis Gomez, Louis J. Gomez on his show. And they spoke a little bit about the Gringo Pappy. They put a clip up on his channel, which is hilarious, I find, um, considering, you know, the fact that Brendan was basically untouchable before the Gringo Pappy came out. No one wanted to speak about the elephant in the room um, because of obviously his connection with Joe Rogan and the fact that he was one of the most frequented guests on there. He was always at the comedy store and people were just really scared because they didn't want to get flipping their neck cranked the way Chin did or just in general they were scared of Rogan, whatever it may be. And it took three dainty looking girls in Kalila, Esther and um, Annie to say something and then suddenly all these guys have now got some flipping hair on their chest and they're willing to come out and say some semi-critical things about printed in his comedy which again you don't have to say anything especially because these guys this is their career this is something they're doing as a legit career they're putting their kids through school um they've, they've got mortgages they're paying for their you know partner shopping habits or whatnot i understand i understand if you don't want to say nothing but it was a real insult to the audience's intelligence that they were acting as if there wasn't this massive elephant in the room of this person who clearly isn't funny and has clearly got some way forward in this art form that these guys call as an art form, which, you know, is debatable. But regardless, they got he's got really far in this art form that these guys say is one of the hardest jobs in the world. It takes whole years to make it and you've got to be really funny. And clearly there's this person who isn't funny who's doing really well it's an insult to our intelligence where you don't talk about it, but they don't because he's friends with Joe Rogan. So these three girls step up and they say something. And then suddenly, suddenly now you have clips on official channels talking about Brendan and the special that he put together clips on official channels. You'd never would imagine that this was a thing before. Never would imagine it. But anyway, we are where we are. So big up Annie, big up Esther and big up Kalila for being brave enough to say something. And again, they didn't even say anything that bad. They just spoke about their personal experience and look what it, bro- it flipping blew into or blew up as or blew up to whatever that term is. But here it is anyway. Louis J. Gomez and Tim Dillon talking about the Gringo Pappy. And it had some very astute observation I thought about the whole thing. But very influential. If you look at the fan, the WrestleMania Fan Festival, if you what we do with Skankfest, like that was like one of the best memories. The WrestleMania Fan Festival, you show up, and it's not just fucking like autographs. They have a lot of interactive shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you're like, you know, you're 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 meeting the wrestlers. You do meet and greets and shit, but they're like doing fucking other things. It's like shows happening. You know what's hilarious? And- Stan Hope goes on Rogan and brings up how cool Skankfest this is. This is ridiculous. And then Rogan just shuts it down immediately and goes, you should do your own fest. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Hope's like Stan Hope's and he's trying to like have a nice pitch. It's a nice pitch. He's like, I did this festival, it's just the greatest thing ever. Let's fast forward a bit. Let's go to group. Yeah. 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 Come on, let's go to group. It's not stealing, you just said dude. Come on. What would you say the difference with Skankfest is? Come on. There's mechanical bulls. On a show it's Gangfest. It's always been great. And every time we've done a live podcast, it's Gangfest. Yeah. It's always been great. It's gonna be super. We're gonna do bastard radio. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm forcing you. It'll be fun. No, I'm doing it. I told I you I would do it. I know. I'm excited. Absolutely, we'll do it. Me and the great Nick Mullen. Uh, I think we're gonna do a state of the industry address as bastard radio. Yeah. So we'll, the biggest topics from the year we're gonna break down. Can I, I just want to cover, please. If we do a state of the industry address, we gotta carve out. Gringo Poppy. Who does what? I want to do <laughs> LA. I want to do the LA. I said we just- no, no, no. I want to do the state of the LA podcast scene oh, yeah. as part of the as part of the state of the industry address is gang fest. Yeah. You and Nick can do everything else. Yeah. Everything else. That's yours. You cover whatever. You, New cover York, LA. you guys cover all of New York television and film. Yeah. Every podcast in the world, other than, and you could also comment on the state of the LA podcast scene, of course. Oh, of course. But I would like to you need to lead it. My expertise i just want to do the state of the la podcast scene the great enduring scene that will never die can we and it'll be called the la podcast scene the scene that will never die and it will have the photos of the people who are currently in prison (laughs) (laughs) tim can we play word association la comic scene sure all right ready you gotta just fire it off don't be a pussy whitney cummings drugs (laughs) bobby lee korean (laughs) i mean it's the first thing that comes to mind brian callen Oh yeah, quickly going back to Whitney Cummings things. Have you guys seen the Whitney Cummings subreddit? I'm not going to get up on it because it's it's a little bit X-rated, but some of the... I wonder if some of the people that exist in this comedy community, and that includes fans, even us included, right? There's a really strange subset of people out there who act as if they've never seen women before. 
the the subreddit is full of these weird clips and images of you know Whitney doing what Whitney does, but zooming in on her bum, zooming in on her tits and stuff. And you know, fair enough, she's got a decent enough body, but they go on as if like she's fucking Jennifer Lopez or something. Like, have these guys never seen women before? Like, what is it about people who are fans of these shows and podcasts when they see girls? They like they get so excited. There's an entire subreddit full of flipping clips and pictures and images of her. I don't know, like, don't get me wrong. She's not like a bad looking woman. I'm not saying that, but I just don't get how they're so excited about her. Like, really excited. Um, some of the clips on there are flipping bizarre. They're taking, like, Instagram lives and there. And don't get me wrong, Whitney's probably, you know, feeding the beast by, you know, the, the, the kind of pivot she's done in terms of how she presents herself online. She spent the longest time being somebody who didn't really want to tap into her sexuality or her looks as a way to kind of, you know, get people to pay attention to her. But, you know, she's embraced it, the whole hair dyeing thing, the whole being scantily clad, you know, whatever, cool, do your thing. But just the reaction from the people watching has been the interesting thing. People are looking at her lives, clipping stuff, capturing it, putting it on there, sharing this, zooming in, look at her changing, look at her turning around, look at this, looking at that. It's like, huh? Anyway. Rough year. <laughs> Gringo Poppy. <laughs> kind of brilliant. <laughs> kind of kind of brilliantly brilliantly funny in a way that no comedy special has ever been because it's it's mysterious in a way because you're looking at it and you're going like there's a lot of choices made and yeah. you don't know why those choices were made of course of course yeah. the comedy store uh fine <laughs> <laughs> that's it i can't name another word i mean that it's funny in it they're saying these kind of things you remember back in the day when they were talking about how great the fucking comedy store was and they wouldn't fucking shut up about it probably the same way that i don't shut up about fucking Bergheim in berlin they'll be talking about it all the time and now joe rogan's left and he's not there anymore he's in austin suddenly people are allowed to actually say what they actually think about the comedy store oh it must be so lame in it to be in the industry like that where you feel like you can't say something because of the people that are associated with it. And again, it's not coming from a fake place. I'm pretty sure this is real, especially considering how Bobby reacted and how everyone was, you know, acting towards him. It's definitely a thing. If you say the wrong thing on a podcast and you make a joke about a person who you're not meant to make a joke about, I could imagine that having some real life consequences for you if you're a comedian in that scene. Like people, you know, it could get dicey, dicey for your career really, really quickly. So maybe you should, you know, keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> but it's just funny how they all let it loose and again they have to thank three women for the fact that they've now got permission to roast the scene a bit and be a little bit silly and get on people three women that's you know yeah well here's what's amazing about the gringo poppy this is what's truly amazing about it okay yes. you're watching it <laughs> and you're in kind of it's it's you're in a little bit of disbelief yeah. because it is, I, I, I wonder, and I know he's trying to get good at stand-up, and I respect yeah. the hell out of that. The question is, what, did, did it have to be a special? No. That's the real question. No. no well, what's that? Yeah. No, he, and I'm not one of these guys. Who said I'm ignoring chat? Martin, no, I'm not ignoring chat. What are you guys saying? Uh, what do you ask there? Do you have a Discord? No, I don't have a Discord. Um... But yeah, should, should I start one? Is that something people want to see? I don't know if people want, if people are bothered to meet on Discord. If you would like me to have one, um, I don't know. Uh, let me see the why is in the chat if you would like me to set up a Discord and then you can drop drop links and stuff in there and stuff. And maybe I can update you on when I'm going to do the show and whatnot and all that other malarkey. Uh, okay, someone's saying I'll join. Why? Okay, cool. I'll set up a Discord then. Cool. No worries. Done. 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 You'd have to ask me twice. I'll set up a Discord for sure. I'll set it up right away. No problem. Someone said no. <laughs> like, nope. Thank you. Cool. Okay. I'll set up a Discord and then we can, um, and then you guys can do your things in there. No worries. I'll do that for sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, I'll guess what I'll do then, once this show's over, I'll leave it obviously there and I'll put all the timestamps in the description. I'll also put a Discord invite link on the 
description and also put it as a pinned comment so if you want to join on discord it'll be on this it'll be on this clip at the bottom of the comments so once this gets uploaded and stuff you'll see sorry once the video not this one once the video that i'm recording right now gets uploaded to my channel you'll see an invite link on the comment section that you can click on and do your thing but yeah i'll, I'll start a discord thank you for the suggestion marty appreciate it guys you're like that's not, hates that's, on Brandon. That's not like, he's on a him. nice guy and, and i know he's trying to be you know like I, but I, the question I, is with that particular thing you go did that have to be i said this on real life podcast he should have friends going because here's the thing he is a charming dude right yes um and he i, I think i don't know at all you know but i, I think he, he, there's probably something there. he's probably a funny he probably makes his friends laugh right yeah i think that he's really great at podcasting on that specific show for that audience, yeah. which they want MMA. There's an audience of people in America that want what he does, yeah. and he does it for them. I am not that audience. Of course. But that's fair. But that's fair. And here's the yeah. thing. We, we all go out. Because I don't care about. Yeah. Everyone stinks at comedy for the first. Some would argue most people are that audience, but you know that's just a joke. But I would say, actually, can you say a joke and then say it's a joke? That is the opposite of a joke, isn't it? But regardless, we digress. I digress. There's no we. I'm only here on my own. But we continue. As I said beforehand, I still think the best route for him would be to just do a T Fat K live thing where he has Chin and Little Brows doing their rapping singing thing. He gets on and does a story time kind of set thing where he pulls five or six stories from his career, from his life, and he basically does them, you know, in rotation. Like one city does this, one city does that, and he tweaks it along the way. And then every year he can, you know, as he's living his life, he can build upon those stories and do that, do it that kind of way. In the same way that he did that Ari Shafir show where he did, you know, the story about him fighting and most of it was made up or whatever it may be. That would be really sick. But the stand up stuff, I think, is just. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you put yourself through that? Especially if you have fans who don't care. Most of the fans are going to see him perform. I don't think I'll go. Again, I'm I'm projecting a bit here, but I don't think fans are going to see Brendan perform, do stand up. They're not expecting to laugh their ass off. They just want to see him in real life and get and get a picture and put it up on their Instagram and hopefully he shares it on this on his story and shit. You know, maybe get something signed, maybe you know, say an inside joke to him, maybe say papa or something. Do you know what I mean? That's what they want. They just want to see him in person, like because he's famous and he's somebody that they like and they, you know, watch for like many, many years and they, you know what I mean, listen to him all the time. But I don't think they're there to actually laugh. So if that's the case, then just make an entertaining show. Make it worth their while, isn't it? Why not? Five, ten years. 20, 30 years. There's a fucking minimum of five. That's a, if you get good and start getting shit under five. Five, that's like fast. It's rare. That's fast. But, the, 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 but again, this five, this thing they always talk about, this five years, this also you have to be good at it. This is this I think is the reason why, maybe another reason why he hasn't really been, you know, successful or as funny as he probably would have hoped in comedy. I think Brendan came into this way too much with an athlete mindset. He probably thought if you just grind enough and you work hard enough, you could be successful. And it's not like that. You have to have some level of ability too to build upon. Hard work does matter, but there's no point of having hard work if you're not actually good at what you want to do. And good again, subjective, but let's be honest, you know, we know when you're good, you know you're not good. It's like, you know, we've all tried to sing once before and quickly realize we don't sound like Luther Vandross and just you know quit it and decide to get a real job happens all the time same thing happened with comedy you maybe would you do a stage show and then you watch a couple of specials and realize oh shit i can't be as funny as that guy maybe i could be funny in my own way but you know that kind of way of funny isn't for me and then you just tweak or you decide to do something else and again the podcasting thing isn't bad what's what's bad about doing a live podcast like it's not you know people do it all the time i don't understand but you know, again, that would take self-reflection. That would take being honest with yourself and maybe he just not something he wants to do now, which is fine. Oh, one of the Michael only people Che, like... Who's my best friend, and he's Pete one Davidson. of the people... You're talking about guys that, like, they got, like... It's rare. Very rare. Yeah. Very rare. And you see it, and you're like, God damn, dude, those guys got good, and they got good fast, yeah. and they started getting things. I was pretty... <laughs> Aaron A. Travis Brown punched out every brain, funny brain to have Brendan's face. Some of the people here that get at him for that Travis Brown fire, so hard. 
I still think that's probably one of the best career moves he ever did, man. Being able to go into a flipping octagon in your underwear and face other men with punches and knees and kicks and elbows takes a lot of bravery, man. That's not something I'm going to laugh about when it comes to Brendan. I don't care how it ended and how memeable some of his fights were with the whole grasping for air. The fact that he fought anyway, regardless, is flipping commendable especially at the time that he was fighting some savages in the heavyweight there's some savages now but god damn it the 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 gap between like the top five and the top 15 was big i mean now this is probably closer so you know if you're shit you're probably not gonna meet francis i mean but back then you know you could face a pretty decent person pretty quickly because outside the top 10 everyone was pretty shitty so the fact that he was around for that long is good enough anyway I mean, one of the biggest sporting organizations, you know, the the premier MMA organization in in in, in the UFC. He had a good run. It didn't end the way it went to end. Like credit to him, but I don't think that's worth laughing. But I understand people love to meme on it. But I don't know, man. I just I think of the thought of getting into an octagon with, with another dude and fighting. Oof, God Almighty. Rare. I got pretty good pretty quickly, but again, I didn't really pop until I started doing this. Yeah. Of course. That was what I needed to do. So, but that's the thing. That's like stand up is kind of gay and stand up, stupid. When we came up, you didn't stand up's even... kind of gay and dumb. <laughs> yeah. L- let's be honest. Yeah. It's w- I, when I watch Brendan do that, it's like I I I go here's a big tough guy, who I should just see in a Ferrari, and he should be able to rip people's faces off yeah. with his catcher mid hands, and I see him running around the stage going. Ah! It's I silly. go, you're gay now. Yeah, You've yeah. become gay. You were. You Why were, are you gay? He was a fucking knight. He I was a, no, he was, he was a, listen, a knight. He was a knight. He's a knight. And now he's a jester. Now he's gay. <laughs> he's a gay jester. He's a gay man. He's a fully gay man. But that's a funny thing, right? And that's a good point. I think I made as well beforehand where I said, like, maybe the whole reason why he's so going heavy on this comedy thing is because the athletic side of his career never really worked out, the sports side of it. Because he obviously always wanted to be a... My my opinion, again, don't know the guy and he can probably argue differently, but my opinion is that he never wants to be a comedian anyway. I think this whole thing he says about he was always funny and, you know, what's, this, what's that guy called? He says he's his North Star, Jim Carrey or Adam Sandler or whatever. I think that story is just something fake that he made up to give his story some little bit of spice or whatever it may be. I still think he always wanted to be an NFL player a professional football player that didn't work out for him and that really must have crushed him because you know throughout his entire life he's probably always been big always been fairly strong always been fairly good at it and you know he was always thought you know it's going to be one clear path to being you know somebody maybe not a starter but being somebody that can be a decent squad member have a decent NFL career then go maybe into media after the fact but that's probably where he thought he was going to be then it doesn't work out and you have to kind of figure out something else and you get into MMA and UFC because, again, you're big, you're athletic, you can get quite far, especially back then because, you know, the skill level wasn't that high. Then that doesn't work out, which I've given credit to because he wanted to get in on that, only to be champion. He didn't want to just be like a Donald Cerrone type person who just fights, you know, just just to fight, but he's not really bothered about being champion. He actually wanted to be champion, didn't work out, he quit. Next best thing to do, if you really want that fame and you want people to look at you and you want attention, is to do stand-up comedy, isn't it? Because you're there on your own, on stage, telling jokes. So maybe that's the reason why he's so adamant to do it. Because this is the one thing that he's done that's like been a legit success. Say what you want about his quality of comedy or not, but it's actually been a success. He tried it. He got in. He's had specials. He sells. He's sold out places that he's been. People come and watch him. It's like a bona fide, measurable success. And a career that he's got basically for life if he wants to do it. So maybe... That is like a real sense of pride and achievement because he did it. Because everything else he tried to do hasn't worked out that way. So that's why maybe he's holding onto it so tightly. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. When you watch this... <laughs> Thank you for the compliment overlook, Kubrick. Appreciate you, bruh. Actually, he's like, Whoa! and you go, what? Why? What is this disease of? Co-? Maybe they should come out next week. You're, what is this? You're disease? six foot. You're six foot six. You're an Adonis. You could beat up ninety nine percent of the people. You could kill in the men world. and fuck women, and you don't have to fuck these skanks at the comedy store. Fuck hot women. Andy Letterman. Fuck hot. But they can't say that, though, innit? That you spent all this time making it 
trying to tell people that you got the coolest jobs in the world, telling people it's the hardest job in the world, talking about how much fun you have on the road, um, making all this money and stuff and having all these adoring fans. And then you wonder why a UFC fighter might look at you guys and think, that's easy, I could do that, and then try and do it also. It's your fault, isn't it? You basically built it up to be this amazing thing and now he's, he's in it. You know, you're now getting upset because he's terrible at it, but he's still more successful than you are. Jeremy's you know I mean? like double comedians are funny in that way, man. Like really, really hilarious. They take themselves super seriously. And then other sides they try to pretend like they're not that bothered when they are. It's just bizarre people. But maybe that's part, maybe that's also the reason why he's not he's not been as funny as he needs to be anyway. Because maybe fundamentally Brian sorry, fundamentally Brendan isn't a degenerate, like in the in the sense of some of the actual comedians are. You know what I mean? Maybe it's not a degenerate. Maybe it's not like he's not like got a screw loose or have like a really tragic upbringing or some really dark times in his life. He's had a fairly smooth sailing life with some, you know, with with two parents in the household, loving family, whatnot. You know what I mean? Like it's just been pretty decent. And he likes to do this because it's fun, not because he's got some anguish or some personal story to tell or he needs to let, you know, or it's like therapy. It's like, no, he just likes to do it because, you know, he likes the attention, he likes fans, he likes to make them laugh, get some money, take some pictures, keep it moving. What is wrong with you? And he, instead, he's fully gay <laughs> on stage in Dallas in front of 45 people being like, the lion is at my door. It's just... <laughs> It's puzzling. It's uh yeah, you, when you don't need it. When you don't need it. But that's the thing. Like, um, you know, I, I don't well, I feel, I, 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 feel people, yeah. I feel bad By shitting way, on his me, comedy because no, I don't no. shit on people's comedy. No, 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 no. Me saying you shouldn't be a comedian is the highest respect I can pay you. Yeah. <laughs> if if I look at you and go, you shouldn't really do comedy, it's me going. You are better, better than, than this. Yeah. I truly believe he's like better than this. Yeah. We all nobody, until you start to do this. This was nobody's a plan nobody no i was in a little kid being like dude i want to fucking dance like a monkey for strangers right and and pray to god that they like me and that they react to my words in a club yes or i won't feel anything that's right that's crazy that's a fucking that's pathetic really honestly yeah. uh, that's a lie why would you pursue the why would you do it for 10 years if you don't think it's going to be a career just for fun come on man yeah. if, if aliens came down and why Watch us doing comedy. It's gay. Making these sounds. And I don't even mean gay like having sex with men. I mean like it's just cringe. Yeah. A little. Yeah. It's a little pathetic. I feel embarrassed that I need the validation of strangers. Yeah. And yeah, let's end it there. You know what? Quay made a good point there. I had no complaints or problems with Brendan Shaw until he got so happy and vicious behind the scenes. That's basically the main crux of this issue here. This whole conversation doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I thought I'd play anyway. That's their opinion on what they had to say. Cool, it makes sense. But that's basically the reason why this is whole, this is blown up and why you're probably tuning into me, isn't it? It's because for whatever reason, a stand-up comedian thought it'd be sensible or thought it'd be makes sense yeah thought it'd be sensible and for it would look it wouldn't look bad to sue a small youtuber into silence because they said something that they didn't like just think about that especially all these years we've heard comedians on joe rogan's podcast and other podcasts complain about cancel culture and the fact that comedians can't say what they want and trans things and all this sort of stuff and being able to take the piss out of people from the lgbtq plus community and all this blah 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 and then suddenly there's a comedian within that community of people who decides to hit a youtuber with a copyright law suit whatever it may be because they dare to upload clips on their own channel, maybe poking fun at them with misleading and clickbaity titles. So what? You get on stage and embellish and punch up stories about stuff that didn't happen in an effort to make people laugh. People do shitty things all the time. You do it for your audience, for the betterment of their entertainment of the night. And people on YouTube maybe do clip baity titles and put clips together in a way to make you look bad and they benefit for their channel and to maybe get some, you know, cheeky Susan funds or AdSense bucks, whatever it may be. Why should I be a bother? And honestly, this might be one of the biggest, you know, faux pas you've ever seen somebody in media ever do. Because before this happened, 
I don't think it was a big deal that Brendan was bad at comedy and maybe was successful at it also. There's plenty of people out there who are successful and maybe not so good at their job. It happens all the time, even in workplaces. We've all worked with people who, you know, you when you find out how much they make and you're like, oh my God, you're redacted. How do you make that much money? It happens all the time. Maybe they got grandfathered in. Maybe they're, you know, a family friend of the owner. Maybe they're just really good at convincing people to give them more money, whatever the case. But we've all worked with people who maybe you look at and you think this person's a bit undeserving of their success. It happens all the time. Cool, it's fun to laugh at, but it is what it is. What really got on people's nerves was when they found out that this guy who's been given every blessing, who was introduced into the, who was kind of co-signed into the, comedy scene or into entertainment you know how rappers get brought into you know when what was it Lil Wayne brought out Drake or whatever you get that intro that cosign Brennan had the best cosign in the world you had Brian Callen and Joe Rogan two staples of comedy at the time two really popular figureheads introducing him all the benefits being able to live in LA and have the comedy store there and be able to perform on that stage even though you probably wasn't at the level to perform there all these great things and then you find out this person who's been blessed and given all these amazing benefits is behind the scene bullying people and being intimidating and poking fun at people and trying to sleep with people's wives and shit. Ooh. That's when people get pissed off because they're like, hold on, we don't even think you deserve to be here and now you're doing this behind the scenes? All right, cool, it's over. So that's probably what's happened. That's probably what's happened. People are like, you know what? No, we can't be having this. We just can't be having this. And I understand it. I do get it. I do understand it. And it would be nice if he got it to himself. Maybe that would be a good way to kind of lean into stuff. But I just think it's too far gone at the moment. I think he is where he's at. And he's not going to change anytime soon. I really don't. Um, I think this is just the way it is. He decided that he's going to be this guy. Who's not going to be self-aware and stuff. And it's, that's how he's going to be successful. And like I mentioned before, I don't know if you guys agree, but I said it before, but I generally do think part of the reason, part of the, another like under underrated ingredient of being successful in life, especially in media, especially in social media, is to be incredibly um, lacking in self-awareness or to just ignore what people say about you that's wrong and just, kind of lean into the bad stuff it honestly 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 is super super important um it does really help to kind of bury your head in the sand and just pretend like the other noise doesn't exist and just keep plowing forward because everyone i've seen do that is like really really successful um that yeah delusion is really really important in 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 media nowadays i look at somebody i don't know who i think of maybe like a trisha paytas or like a dsp or something these people again you maybe not you might not want their life but if you just think of those you know in terms of a career just making jokes online and not doing much hard work they've all really smashed it in that field and they are you know some of the most delusional people you'll ever find in your entire life because i think sensible people people like you and i who maybe have you know who are, have the ability to be sh you know to to be shame to be shamed into out of things or into things you can't do that but if you don't have any shame you're lacking self-awareness, you're delusional, oof, you're going to be so successful, really successful, really, really successful. Um, so yeah, so big up them in that regard.